Welcome to the crossover. And babe, what's with the mask? Well, I just wanted to make it a point to everybody who's watching today that at the time of this filming, it's June 2020, and we've just gone through crazy pandemic worldwide. And now in America, there's all kinds of riots going on with the Black Lives Matter uh, group and Antifa. And I just wanted to sit, show everybody, they watch this 20 years or 100 years from now, this is what we're living with right now. Well, today you're going to see Avi Lipkin, a, has a degree in Sovietology, share with us the roots of socialism, communism, how they made its way from Europe to America, and how groups like Antifa today have that same theology ideology. Stay tuned next on The Crossover. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. Avi, welcome to The Crossover again. Good to be back. Good to have you back. Today's show, you're going to give us a teaching here on um, the roots of anti-Semitism, Europe and Russia. And uh, why don't you start off by giving us a definition and then take us to how did this even begin, Middle Ages, time, etc. Yes, well indeed, uh, if we go back 2,000 years, you have the history of the Roman legions carrying off the slaves from the land of Israel after the uh, various revolts were suppressed by the Roman legions. Uh, many of these people were carried up over the Alps into what is today Switzerland. And actually Yiddish is a form of Swiss German from over a thousand years ago. So that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Jews actually started working their way north along the Rhine River uh, in Germany. And I know from the history of my own family that uh, around 1600, uh, my forebear was invited by the King of Poland uh, to Warsaw to build the walls of Warsaw. And uh, with him came a lot of Jewish people from Germany, from Switzerland, from those Jews who were carried over by the Romans into Central Europe. And uh, one of the important things about the Jews at that time was they were the only ones really who were literate and knew how to do mathematics. And uh, if you had the Jews, you had an empire. And the king, or rather kings of Poland, uh, at that time were Norwegian, Swedish, and uh, we built the walls of Warsaw. Uh, the Jews became uh, the tax collectors for the King of Poland. And at that time, Poland went from Lithuania all the way to the Black Sea. Poland was a tremendous empire. Uh, it conquered the Ukrainians, it conquered the Russians. And this is the beginning of the anti-Semitism. Because if the Jews were the uh, right hand of the King of Poland, uh, and by the way, the King of Poland was Catholic. Okay. And so what you had in the Ukraine and in Russia was primarily the Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox churches. So there was a lot of animosity for many, many different reasons. Uh, in 1648... But they were the tax collectors, you said. That's so why they were they, so hated. They were getting together, but... That's why they were so hated by, okay. by the Ukrainians and the Russians. Now, in 1648, uh, there was a horrible massacre of Jewish and Polish uh, noblemen. Uh, in the Ukraine by Chmelnitsky. Uh, and they say at that time, the whole population of the earth, of Jewish people, was one and a half million, and half a million were killed in the Ukraine by the Ukrainians uh, because of the hatred of the King of Poland and the Jewish uh, servants of the King of Poland. Then as we go along, we see that the Russians nibble away at the Polish kingdom and finally defeat in, 17, in the 1700s. And, uh, Poland basically ceases to exist. And the, the Russians, by defeating Poland, brought in all these new territories full of Jews. And the Russians did not like the Jews because they were considered part of the Polish enemy. Okay. And there was something called the Pale of Settlement. Uh, and so the, the Tsar of Russia said the Jews can only live in that area. They cannot go in to the rest of Russia. Those were the, the Stettles? Is that how you say it? Yes. And, yeah. and so that was the early anti-Semitism basically based on the, po uh, the Jews of Poland serving the king of Poland. And again, the Ukrainians hated the Jews because they were the tax collectors for the king of Poland. When Poland was defeated, then the Jews were like in no man's land. 
Now, what happened was, as we go along, you see the Turks coming up uh, from the south. You know, they defeated the Greeks, the Serbs, the Romanians, the Hungarians, uh, and the Serbs actually uh, were bordering on the Ukraine. Uh, Black Sea was a, a Turkish area, and, um, and so the Jews were known to have very good relations with the Turks. If you remember, when the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492, the Turks took them in, and some went to Morocco, some went to Turkey, some went up into the Balkans, which is Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox. And so there was a double hatred for the Jews because many Jews actually did quite well in the Turkish Empire and others did well in the Polish Empire. And all of these are enemies of Russia. Okay. And so that is a, a, a lingering a problem. So a double hit there. Uh, yes. Now, another point which is very important is if we look at America, America only really started to exist in 1620 with Plymouth Rock. Okay. But the Russians were fighting the Turks for a thousand years. So if the Jews are associated with the Turks as allies, they're the enemy. If the Jews are associated with the King of Poland, they're the enemy. And uh, so this is the early part of the anti-Semitism. Uh, very simply, the different tribes were jostling for power. And in the end, you know, the Russians won out pretty much against the Poles and the Ukrainians. Um, and so what I want to say in the next segment, of course, is to talk about the rise of communism, socialism. So let me ask you this. I'm reading from the uh, professor Vasily Shedrin, Queen's University on Jewish Studies. And in this time frame that you're talking about, he's saying that the anti-Semitism there in the Middle Ages is more based on the religion. And I, and I guess when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, today it's, you could just mention the word Israel and there's anti-Semitism, the land, the people. But here he said it was the focus was on the religion because they were set apart. You know, God set them apart. They were their own communities and it made them different. They weren't blending in. And can you expand on that? Does that, does that fit for why the rise of anti-Semitism uh, would be there? A very interesting point, and again, I want to come back to the United States for a moment because I see the United States as an exceptional country. Uh, I was very friendly for a number of years with a Catholic nun, uh, Sister Rose Thering, and she was a professor at Seton Hall University in New Jersey. And if you remember the Vatican in Vatican, uh, Vatican II, uh, it, it, they came out with an, uh, a decision that the Jews did not kill Christ. Uh, now, the Catholic Church, until Vatican II, they were saying, yes, the Jews did kill Christ. Uh, so now, when you talk to Catholics, they say, well, you know, the Vatican decided the Jews didn't kill Christ. Who killed Christ was a bunch of rabbis who worked with the Romans. But, you know, Jesus, with the Sermon on the Mount, 5,000 Jewish people came to hear him, and they were fed fish and, you know, loaves by, by Jesus. Uh, they would not be following Jesus if they hated him. So the masses loved Jesus. And that's why he was seen as a threat by the rabbis. Um, so the Russians, the Russian church, Russian Orthodox, Ukrainian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, these churches still believe that the Jews killed Christ. So, but in those days, everybody thought that the Jews killed Christ. So we were Christ, the, by the way, the Irish also thought we killed Christ. So Jewish kids would get beaten up in Brooklyn, you know, that kind of a thing. But praise God, the Catholic Church abandoned that. And uh, so it's obvious uh, uh, Protestants abandoned that a long time ago. So, Avi, hold that right there. Yeah. We've got to take a break. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. Wir leben in einer Zeit, in der wir uns aktiv an den Holocaust erinnern müssen. We are living at a time when we need to actively remember the Holocaust. Aber wenn wir nicht wissen, was der Holocaust war, der Tod von sechs Millionen Juden, die Verantwortung von Menschen, die geschwiegen haben, dann können wir nicht Verantwortung für die Zukunft nehmen. But unless we know what the Holocaust was, the deaths of six million people, we will never be able to take responsibility for the future. Wir erleben, wie der Antisemitismus in einer ungeheuren Art und Weise in Europa und auch in Amerika wieder explodiert. And we're currently seeing a tremendous explosion of anti-Semitism in America and in uh, Europe again. Und ich wünsche sehr, dass dieser Park und dieses Gelände dazu dient, gemeinsam zu lernen und die Stimme zu erheben. 
and I really wish that this park will serve the purpose for learning together and raising our voices together. Uh, during uh, World War II, I was a young child, seven years old, and uh, my father and family were uh, they dislocated from our home. And as that happened, my father was uh, taken to the Jasenovic camp, which is uh, in Croatia, on the river Sava. And I realized that uh, after doing research with some friends, that uh, this was a location and a duty of our people living here to remember and do something about the remembrance of over 700,000 people, of which there were 20,000 children. Avi, let's pick up, um, talk about the rise of socialism leading to communism, because right now in America, the socialistic ideology is taking root in a big way, and uh, we're obviously concerned, and we should be learning from history. Teach us. Very correct. Um, in 1648, as I said before, the population of the Jewish people is one and a half million uh, throughout the world. And Khmelnytsky in 1648 killed half a million Jews. That was a Holocaust. We lost a third of our people. But what happened was, 100 years, 200 years later, uh, because of the improvement of medicine, uh, the Jews jumped to 18 million. Wow. And uh, this was, of course, mostly in the Eastern European areas. And uh, this increased the anti-Semitism because the Jews were seen as a foreign element uh, threatening to take over the area. Now, when you look at the, uh, I don't know if you remember, Fiddler on the Roof. Sure. And Tevye is yelling at God, pointing his finger, and said, why did you choose us as a chosen people? The people of Anatevka. Anatevka. Why don't you go choose some other people? Because this business of being the chosen people got us into a lot of trouble, and a lot of people were killed and persecuted and expelled, like from Anatevka. And what happened was, okay, and this is the part that leads us to where we are today in America also, okay. that uh, whereas the Jews who came to America in the 1600s and 1700s and 1800s and participated in the American Revolution and participated in the Civil War uh, were by and large embraced by America's Protestants, okay? Now, in Europe, it wasn't like that. In Europe, the Christianity of that time hated the Jews, feared the Jews as they grew so much in numbers, and the persecution of the Jews was such that a lot of these Jews who actually lived very much in poverty were saying, you know what, if being the chosen people means we get slaughtered and persecuted and expelled, uh, there's something wrong with God. Let's abolish God. And so a lot of Jewish people, but also non-Jews, uh, became socialists and communists. And in Christianity, you have a term called the one new man in Christ. Okay, you're right. Well, in socialism, communism, we have the one new man in Marx. So you can be an atheist and still hold your Jewish identity? Uh, Jewish identity, but you abandon faith in God. You're only ethnically Jewish. Uh, you don't pray. You don't put on phylacteries. You don't keep kosher. You don't keep Shabbat. Uh, take your kippah off. Uh, and so a lot of these communists and socialists said, you know what? You know, we don't need God. He's only trouble for us. So what happens here... Because they were emancipated into Europe, they were growing, They were emancipated, well. they didn't need God anymore. Okay. 
And as a result, uh, what happened was the, the Eastern European Christians who were either Catholic or Orthodox hated the Jews also because now they became anti-God. Okay. So it was... It, it went the, either way. It was a third strike against the Jewish people. Now, something very important. When you have the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, the Bolsheviks were crazy and, and very megalomaniac in the sense that they wanted to conquer Poland, they wanted to conquer Germany, they wanted to spread the, uh, the, the Bolshevik Revolution all over Europe. And so, for example, my grandfather actually fought in the Polish army against the Soviets. Oh. But who was leading the Soviet army? Trotsky. Trotsky and senior Jewish leaders were all in this international war oh. uh, against the uh, bourgeoisie, against the religious groups. And so what happened was the Polish hated them because they were communists. The Ukrainians hated them. And in 1920, there was a civil war between the Ukraine and the, the Red Russians, the Bolsheviks, who were led by the Jews. Okay. And so the, the whites, or shall I say the Ukrainian nationalists, uh, under Pitlura, Semyon Pitlura, they killed half a million Jews in the civil war in 1920. And Jabotinsky, who was a great uh, Jewish-Russian leader, said, this is a sign, this is in 1920, this is a sign of what's going to happen in the future. He, right. didn't know, he didn't know about Hitler in 1920. Right. But, but he, said, he said, evacuate, liquidate the diaspora, or the diaspora will liquidate you. Wow. And so what we see happening... And who said that? Jabotinsky said that. I say it also today in America. Yes. Because I see the things happening here in America that we need to talk about. Now, regarding the American reality, uh, the Jews who came here, the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, intermarried with the Christians and disappeared, basically. Uh, so who are the Jews today? These are the Jews who came from Poland, Russia, Nazi Germany, and the Catholic Inquisition. Uh, and they are socialists and communists, and they ban God. They come to America, and the, the, what we call the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, which also includes black people and Chinese and Hindus and all these others who are Protestant denominations, uh, they are not seen as friends by the Jews, even though they are very, very friendly to the Jews here in America. And so the only th way that will ever change, of course, is one of two ways, either when the Jews pick up and move to Israel, which is what I'm uh, asking the Jews to do, uh, or if the Jews stay here and send their kids to college and the kids intermarry with Christians, and what we see from the Christians in America is love. And so the Jews are embraced by this Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy and love, and then they realize that the Christians are not the, the same cr bad Christians of Europe. Okay. And, and they so may come happens, back to their God through that too? Uh, they come, though, some of them come back to God through Christianity, through the Messianic uh, movements. Uh, but like I said before, we face today a threat, and that's another story completely from Islamic terrorism uh, that believes that the Jews must all be annihilated. So whereas we were allies with the Turks and with the Arabs a thousand years ago and 500 years ago, Today, they are the ones who want to destroy us, and the Christians have, are the ones who are defending us, at least some of the Christians. So. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. The crossover exists to communicate to the Jewish community that there is a growing group of Christians who love them unconditionally. The focus of the crossover program is to promote a greater understanding of the differences and similarities between Jewish and Christian customs, history and theology, while encouraging a closer walk with the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. As a second-generation Holocaust survivor, Rosalie's Jewish heritage includes parents who were protected from the Nazis by Christians. Yet for more than a decade, Mitch and Rosalie searched for meaning in life in the New Age movement. But after returning to their Judeo-Christian roots, they discovered God's purpose for their lives, to rebuild bridges between Christians and Jews. Now through TV, radio, the internet, speaking engagements, the healing room, and print and video resources, they are reuniting Jews and Christians in fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they tackle tough topics and welcome dynamic guests on The Crossover. The Promised Land. 
And I also try to make it very clear to the Christians all over the world that they are threatened to the same extent as the Jews and Israel is, are threatened. Uh, and I also say basically that Jews and Christians are waiting for the Messiah, who is a Jew from Israel who speaks Hebrew. And that Messiah is going to come to Jerusalem. And so Christians share this faith with the Jews. The Hebraic roots of Christianity. And we begin looking at Jesus through Jewish spectacles and not our Texas spectacles or American spectacles or even Western culture spectacles. He's so much more glorious. He's so much more grand. It does not in any way detract from the fact that he's the son of God, the risen savior, but he's also a man. Judaism 101. Many times people ask, what is a Jew? Is it a race? It is, is it a people? Is it a culture? Jewish Christian relations. Bible, fact or fiction. For more information on the Crossover and the Crossover Project, contact Rosalie Jerome or log on to our website. Avi, we know that anti-Semitism has many slurs and stereotypes over the centuries. And um, talk to us, uh, but it's teeth that are evil no matter when. Talk to us today, current events, Putin, Russia, Ukraine. Bring us up to date. Okay, well, uh, firstly, I did want to talk a little bit about World War II. We spoke about, you know, the Bolshevik uh, Revolution. We didn't talk about World War II. Uh, World War II, uh, the Nazis uh, made it very clear from the outset that they were out to annihilate the entire Jewish people. This thrust the Jewish people into the embrace of the Soviet Union and the Communist Party. And Jews fought uh, disproportionately, m more than the Christians actually, and many Jews died fighting for the Soviet Union, fighting the Nazis, disproportionately more even than the uh, non-Jews. Uh, the relationship between the Jews and modern-day Russia is very good. You do have pockets of anti-Semitism uh, in different parts of Russia. Um, there's something very, very common about anti-Semitism in Russia and in the West, and that is the following. Every country has a form of nationalism and patriotism. Because of the communism and the socialism of the Jews in Russia, we were considered cosmopolitan or a universalist. So you have nationalist people who are usually the Christians because the state goes by the religion of the church of that country okay. and the Jews obviously are out so the Jews became what you call the universalists. And Stalin was purging the party and killing many Jews uh, saying that they were not real Russians, that they were universalists, they were cosmopolitan. Uh, and you have that today uh, in America where a lot of so-called liberal Jews, socialist Jews, uh, for them, patriotism, you know, red, white, and blue, and the flag and everything, they hate that. Yep. And they say, no, no, we work for universalism for all the nations wow. of the world. And it is at the heart of communism to talk about the solidarity of all the nations. And uh, actually, I was on Radio Moscow in 1994, and I did a uh, one-hour show in Russian. And uh, I said to the Russians, I said, you know, uh, you, say, you used to be the enemies of the United States. I'm telling you right now, in 1994, where it's no longer the Soviet Union, it's Russia. Uh, America is not your enemy. America is Christian, and Russia is Christian today in 1994. Europe is Christian. I mean, I'm, thinking, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about Europe in just a moment. And Israel is a, tr is a traditional ally of Russia because of the common faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I said the enemy of Russia for a thousand years has been the Muslims and the Turks, because the Muslims, Turks, were burning down Moscow, burning down Warsaw, burning down Kiev. They were at the gates of Vienna for 200 years. Um, I mean, all of this is dwarfs the entire American history, which is only from 1620, and there was never really, except for 1803, in, in the halls of Tripoli, you know, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores mm -hmm. of Tripoli, uh, there was never really much connection with Islam at that time. And so the the interviewer on Radio Moscow said to me, yes, but you know, we still believe in the communist ideology called the solidarity of all the nations. And I said to him, that's baloney. <laughs> Islam wants to take you over and destroy the Russian church. 
I'm a Jew. I'm telling you, have faith in your church. I go to, I was in Poland, in Warsaw. Yeah, wow. I said, have faith in your church because that's the backbone of your, of your country. American Christianity, through all the denominations, have faith in your churches because that's what keeps America great is its Christianity. You know what Putin said? What made Russia great? It's Christianity. Wow. And he loves the Jews. Hmm. And so usually when I see someone who claims to be a socialist or communist, they hate God, they hate Christianity, they hate Judaism. It's called Antifa. That's what we face today in America. Avi, in the last minute that we have, what would you say to our audience here, uh, bringing this to a head? Here we are dealing with socialism, Antifa, uh, the world is, wants no borders in Europe, etc. That seems to be failing, but looks like chaos out there right now. It's a very strong chaos, and it's very important for the majority of the American people uh, who are Christian to take a stand to defend the values that made America great. Now, I'm an optimist. I think America will pull out of this trouble. But there's also a pessimistic side which says that there's going to be another Holocaust in this country. Now the Jewish people are famous, never again, never again, you know, with the Nazis. But they don't see the new uh, Holocaust coming from Islam. And Islam hates the Jews, wants them dead on Saturday, hates the Christians, wants them dead on Sunday. And I think Jews and Christians need to all of a sudden shift gears or change the diskette and understand that the, the future of America, is, uh, the future of Israel, the future of Russia are, is tied up in God and in the Bible and Amen. those things that unite all of us. That's a good ending word right there, Avi. Thank you. We thank you for coming and being with us again. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back on The Crossover. Babe, an amazing show, relevant, learned a lot. Yes, in fact, I lived in Switzerland for three years, and I did not know that Yiddish comes from Switzerdeutsch. That was pretty fascinating, it's from that language, not German, but Switzerdeutsch. So many other things we learned, and you can learn more about Avi on our website, The Crossover Project, and also... His website, avilipkin.net. And he's got plenty of books. It's fascinating to know that we have Avi Lipkin on our advisory board with uh, the Holocaust Remembrance Association as well, because these are prophetic times and God is at work and we need people like that to help us through the course. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they reach an ever-growing worldwide audience through the crossover. We invite you to become a crossover partner right now by calling the number on your screen. For your monthly gift of $30 or more, you will receive the Crossover Partnership Pack, which includes a DVD of today's program, a personal greeting and prayer message from Mitch and Rosalie, more information about the Crossover Project. As you continue to support the Crossover each month, you will receive a new Crossover DVD, a monthly ministry report, and your name will be added to the healing room. Call now or log on to our website and join the growing family of Crossover Partners. And be sure to join us again next week as Mitch and Rosalie tackle timely topics and welcome dynamic guests on The Crossover. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel.